This is the old differential I removed from the car. It has a 2.93 ratio and I'll be replacing it with a 3.46. At the same time, I'll be reinstalling the limited slip differential kit from Racing Diffs. I need the input and output flanges taken out the donor differential and put onto the new one. I don't have to mark the location of this nut before taking it off because this is the donor differential and I won't be putting the nut back on. With everything I need taken off the donor differential, I can move on to the new one. This is a 3.46 ratio differential off of a 325i automatic. I started off by cleaning up a bit since I want to be more careful with this differential and don't want any stuff getting inside of it. I popped the drain plug off and drained all the old fluid out. And it only missed a little bit. The flanges came off fairly easily, just like the donor differential, but I don't have to be careful with these since I won't be using them. The rear cover popped off much more easily than I expected. The inside is really dirty, which I suppose isn't too surprising considering that most people never change the differential fluid. The old seals weren't too hard to get out, a bit of leverage helped. These tend to get destroyed whenever you remove them, but thankfully the limited slip kit comes with new ones. Next up are these large snap rings. You can use a regular set of pliers for these, but you need a strong set of hands. These have their widths marked on the side of them because they act as shims. It's very important to keep track of which width was on what side. Now I can remove the whole carrier assembly. I had to fiddle with it for a while. I found out that you kind of have to have the whole thing at a very particular angle in order to slide it out. I took a look at all the gears and made sure there were no cracks or anything. Thankfully they all looked good. I thought these horizontal lines in the gears were actually grooves, but they didn't feel like anything to the touch. Next, I remove the spider gear pin with a hammer and a punch. You should hit it on the concave side of the pin.
And now it's time to unbox the new Racing Diffs Limited Slip Kit. Here are the seals I was talking about. There's also a new pin, four springs, two halves to the kit, and two friction pads. There's also two retaining pieces that are used for assembly purposes only. Oh dear. I did my best with my crappy vice that I had already, but it simply would not suffice. While I waited for the new vice to arrive, I decided to clean things up a bit. You can see just how filthy the inside of this differential was. I do not actually recommend taking apart all the spider gears to do this. It is quite difficult to get back together and you have to line things up just right. Eventually I figured it out and things kind of slid back into place. With the new vise, I could finally clamp down the kit and install the retaining clips. I didn't even bother bolting the vise down on the table yet to do this. Following the directions in the kit, I put some fluid where the pads go. This is to keep them stuck to the body so they don't misalign themselves when you undo the springs. Notice how my friction pads don't have a circular cutout on the inside. I believe some of the newer kits do have this to prevent you from having to cut your axle flanges down. I was careful to make sure everything was aligned just right and finally released the springs in the kit. It's a bit nerve-wracking since you never really know when it's going to pop. I tried driving the new pin in with a hammer, but I shortly ran into some issues. It seemed to go okay at first, and I was sure to put the pin in the right direction because of the retaining clip. I even put the screw in place, but this is where I noticed the problem. There's actually shards from the threads I pulled out on that retainer that are almost mashed into those gears. Well, it's actually the retaining ring that goes inside here. It must have got pulverized. <laughs> I only had one spare and it was inside a donor differential. So I pulled it out and tried again. This one also sheared. So I ordered a whole box of them online and waited for them to arrive. In the meantime, I continued cleaning up the differential because it was still pretty dirty. The box finally arrived and had a whole bunch of sizes. The size you need is an 18 millimeter, which I'd measured previously. Number three. This one also failed. The pin has a chamfer on it, which is supposed to help compress the o-ring, but it wasn't completely all the way down to the shaft, so I filed it down in hopes that it would help. This one also failed, but I tried it again. I think I got it that time. The only thing I'm confused about is how this part is awfully recessed now. It's like a solid quarter inch too short it looks like and this side is just barely flush because that uh, snap ring goes into that groove so I don't really know what to do about this but I guess I'll just uh, put the screw in With the kit finally installed, I could start reassembling the differential. Okay. 
These bolts could torque to 100 foot-pounds or 140 newton meters. The first ring goes in easily, just make sure to match up the gap at the top of the ring with a notch in the top of the differential case. The second ring is much more difficult to get in because everything is so tight. Two hits from a soft hammer seated into place just fine. I installed the new seals from the kit. You really don't have to push these in very far. Using the old seal helped me to guide it in properly. I didn't think I had to, but it became evident that I would have to cut down my axle shafts. They were clearly too long and were hitting the friction pads inside the differential. This can be done with a grinder, but I would recommend using a lathe. Now I can put on the input flange from the other differential. After tapping it in place, I was able to hear a concerning amount of play. The torque on this nut is important, and most people keep track of its position when they take it off. However, I swapped input flanges and couldn't trust that they were both the same exact height. I referenced the footage of taking the nut off and did my best to get about the same tightness. It's important to note that this nut does not actually control backlash, it controls a preload on the pinion bearing and to some extent the wear pattern. There's a crush washer inside that you have to be careful not to compress too much. What does affect backlash is a horizontal placement of the ring gear. If it's too far to the left, it'll be too loose and it'll be too much play. If it's too far to the right, it'll be too tight and there won't be enough play. This is adjusted by the axle flange retaining rings that have the thickness marked in them that I pointed out earlier in the video. I put some grease in the ring gear and rotated it a few times to check the wear pattern. As far as I could tell it looked good and it seemed to match the wear pattern that was already on the gear. I bought a gauge so I could check the backlash between the ring and pinion gear. It was hard to keep the whole thing from spinning and throwing off my readings, but as far as I could tell it was within 5 thousandths of an inch or about 0.13 millimeters, which is at the very top of the allowable range. The concerning backlash noise is probably because there is no fluid in the differential yet. I punched in the retaining ring and I actually found that it was a lot easier using the socket for the nut to help punch it in place. I applied some gasket material to the rear case and bolted it on. Racing dips the visors using a 75W140 differential fluid which I have yet to add. Make sure the fluid is made for limited slip differentials as well. It looks good in the subframe that I reconditioned and added Condor Speed Shop bushings to in my last video. It'll be some time before I have a chance to test it on track, but if you want to stay updated, please be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.